Some of you are... Is anyone here doing level four this year? That's... Because we just did the course, right? So a lot of you guys that were on the level four exams, except for one, are kind of disappointed and not into training right now, I would say. <laughs> so I'm going to guess that you guys are on level three exams. So let me find some appropriate um, footage here of not corridor, because you guys don't look at corridor in your, um, in your level three stuff. There's some good stuff. Okay. So give me some stuff here, some characteristics. How is the ski performing on the snow? Is it gripping or is it slipping a lot? It's a slipping a lot. Okay, you see the ski slip a lot. Okay, so you as the uh, coach, as the instructor, you gotta figure out why it's slipping so much. So uh, what, are, what are the mechanics of creating grip on the snow? How do you create grip? Okay, so you need to turn what part of the body? You need to turn the legs. So you turn from the lower body like this. You turn from the lower body like that. Here, lower body like this turns. And then you can angulate and you can get grip by doing that action. And, and you know, this doing that action for sure dependent on how you stand. If your stance is off, then, then that leg action is tough, and then you can't get the grip. So, But if you stand well, then you turn the legs like this, and then you can get the, the ski to grip like that, and you have, um, you have uh, what do you call it, a fixture, a, 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 a platform. Form. Good. You have a platform on the mountain. So this gear, we said, does not have a platform on the mountain. So what is it, what skill is lacking can this skier turn his legs? Yes or no? Watch. Can this skier turn his legs? Okay, so how do you know it's no? Other than the fact that the ski slips, what is another symptom? Sorry? So you see a lot of body action, don't you? So you see when he turns, the whole body turns. See the way the whole body turns away from the skis? Okay. Because the whole body turns, the ski stays flat. If I'm skiing and if I go like this here with my body, then the ski is going to be flat. You see, I can't get much edge like that. The only way to get edge is to be there, then I can get edge. If I'm here, that flattens the ski. If I turn with the leg, if I do this with the leg, like that, then the ski comes up on its side, and then I can get edge and grip. So what skill is it that this person needs to develop in his, his skiing? Okay, stance and balance. So, okay, you say stance and balance. What is it about the stance that you don't like? Sometimes you know, I mean, it's there, but you need to work on the stance and balance first to be able to. Okay, so my question to you is if you need to work on stance and balance first, like you can get someone standing pretty well on the ski but and then rotating. Okay. So, let's look at a stance. This is a good one. Let's look at this person's stance. And all positive places. So, okay, so the stance is forward. Okay, good eye. So the stance is forward. You can see that the, the hips are in front of the feet. You see a, a line here where the, the line of the tib, tibia, and then that's straight like this, and the person's hips are out in front of the feet like that. Um, so, and you know, with the stance like that, can you turn your legs if that's your movement? Good. So, what's your name? Nanu. Daniel. Daniel. Nanu, Nanu, Daniel. <laughs> um, so, you need to get him standing how, Dan? So, so I the joint to bend. Getting Probably a similar, similar line. More of a bend in the joints? Yeah. Okay, so every, all equal, so they're all equally bent. everyone stand up. I want everyone to stand up. So stand up like this here I and can. bend. Yeah. If you could just go back. Just go back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about <laughs> that. So I want you to take. Like this. Yeah. Now I want you guys to just bend. If you can get some support from something, just bend your ankles forward like that. So okay, just the ankles like this. So we're we're mimicking that position, and then try and turn your legs. 
Turn your legs from that position. So if the stance is here, then that's the action that the skier takes and the ski stays flat. So how should the stance be, Dan? Should be more bent this way, like that. And now stand like this, and now turn your legs. Okay, now turn your legs. So where does the turning action come from? Is it coming from the ball of the foot, the toes, or the heel? It comes from the heel, doesn't it? So you stand like this here, you've got an angle in the femur so that you can turn your legs like that. And once you stand correctly and have the ability to turn your legs, then you're able to do what? Angulate and grip. Good. So we need to work on this person's stance. Very good, Dan. Work on this person's stance and this person's ability to turn from the lower legs. And the outcome of that is getting grip on the snow, and ultimately grip gives you what? Gives you front of reflection, gives you deflection. So it allows, once you can turn the leg, stand correctly, turn the legs, the ski holds on the snow, and then it deflects you, the skier, to and fro across the hill. So if you can work on stance and pivoting with this guy, you are nailing it. Thanks, Dan. straight forward. This person's like this. So what So what do I have to do to fix them? What has to go back? Okay, hips have to go back like this so that he can get an angle that in the femur that matches the tibia. And, um, and so what is he going to feel when he does that? Is it going to be harder work or less harder work? There, is it, are his muscles going to get more tired or less tired? Sorry? Okay, any other thoughts? Okay, why do ski racers have legs that are like that? You ever watch ski racers like World Cup guys? They are built, and girls, they are built so powerfully. Their glutes and their quads. Why are they so strong? They, what is, they squat. They, it's like they squat when they ski. So world class skiers ski like this, like that. Do you do that in the summer? You sit against a wall like this in the summer? So which is, which is more tiring, to sit like this or like this? Number one. Number one, yeah. Like, so to stand, like, like to stand with the legs straight or the femur straight, like that, that's not so tiring. But standing like this here, that puts demands on the quads and the, and the glutes and makes you more tired, makes you more powerful. And it also gives you better grip and better deflection. Skiing has to be physical. If you go out there on the snow and you watch from the chairlift, look down at how people ski, and you will see that, like, I'm going to say 80%, I'm going to throw in 80% of intermediate skiers ski like that, where they go straight like this with, with the ankle flexed, and, it's, and they go, wow, I skied all day, I didn't get tired. Well, guess what? Your skis didn't grip one turn the whole day. They never gripped on the snow, and there was no pressure build up, you weren't standing correctly, and you will never get tired standing like that, and you will never be a great skier standing like that. So, great skiers use their big muscles, and that's why we're in the gym in the off season. We're doing squats and lunges and stuff in the gym, these things here, like that in the gym, so we get big and strong in that part of our body. Then we can stand correctly, turn from the lower body, get the ski to grip, get the grip to deflect the mass, and then by the end of the day, you're just exhausted, and then you got to go have beer over at Merlin's because you're so tired and you need to relax and chill with your buddies. Okay? And that's why we work out hard in the off season. See the, the pattern, eh? You see the way the knees slip out like this, the leg is straight. Okay, the leg is straight, slipping out, and the upper body is making the turn. Okay. Cool. Wow, what is on top of this person's head? <laughs> what is that? Okay, what are some characteristics here? What do you like about this person's skin? Okay, there's some mobility. Okay, is this ski holding better than the last year? Yes. It is, okay? So the ski 
is gripping and there's some deflection with that skier. Okay? What do you notice about the stance? And when I say the stance, what do you notice about the distance between the skis as the turn progresses? Watch his skis. It slips out. The lower leg slips out, the ski kind of moves away, so the distance between the skis actually gets a little bit wider as the person gets through to the end of the turn. Okay? Uh, here's another question. What do you notice about the angles in the body? So, so great skiers have a look like this. Great skiers have a look like this in the turn, like that. Okay, and you can see here, I've got a C shape. I've got angulation at the hip, like that, that's the way, like that, angulation at the hip. So let's look at this here, and you guys tell me, do you see angulation at the hip? Watch here. Okay, so do you see, look there, do you see this? Or do you see this? Right, so so what do you think that is? So we don't see a lot of angles here. You see the bump on that side of the hip. It'd be great if that bump were on the inside part of the body and then you would see more of a C shape through there. So what do you think it is that is missing from this skier's skill that makes for, we'll call him climb. So you've got, you're doing good stuff there. So what is it? So it's pivoting. So this skier rotates the body like that. There's a lot of turning effort in the body. So if I rotate the body through the turn, where does my weight tend to go? Inside. To the inside ski. And so if I take weight off the outside ski, what is the outcome going to be? Mm -hmm. It'll, skid It'll skid out a little bit. And you see that in this performance of the ski. So as this skier goes through the turn, there's some rotation that moves him away from the outside ski. The ski slips a little bit and the distance between the skis increases. And the reason for that is because instead of the skier being turning from the lower body and being angu angulated over the outside ski, the skier rotates the body like that, gets inside, and then the ski slips a little bit through the end of the turn. So you want to work on lower body turning with this person. And any ideas, like what would be a good tactic for working with this skier. What kind of approaches, exercises could you work on with this person? What do you think? Okay. Okay, bricage, so doing this with the legs, good. Side slip, to make sure it doesn't let one foot come. So a side slip? Well, in between the or so. Okay, all right, all right, I'm okay with that. Any other thoughts? Javelin, and you know what? Javelin turns. You know what's a really cool one is kind of a power plow type thing? Ooh. Any exercise that makes the skis go like that. Can you guys see that on the video? If your skis, what do you call that, converge like in a wedge? If the tips are closer than the tails, then it makes for that kind of a position on the ski. You can see the angle that my boots are at. One boot is pointing one way, one boot the other way. And this gear, if they go like that, they might end up here. So anything power plow or um, javelin turn, is really excellent because it makes the skier go like that. Okay. And then when you're teaching, you have to make sure that you connect. If you're teaching a power plow, make sure you connect the ability to turn from the lower body like this and angulate at the hip with the performance of the ski on the snow. Make sure you draw that connection. The reason that we're doing this exercise is to get you angulated over the outside ski, which is going to get the ski to grip on the snow and result in a deflection of the mass to and fro across the hill versus losing some energy as a result of rotating the hip. Okay. It's important, who here teaches beginners lots of beginner lessons? Everyone, this is good. If you're teaching lots of beginner lessons, you get out there at 8.30 with your class or 9 o'clock, you spend the whole day in a wedge. There's not a better way to train for lower body turning and maintaining a wedge the whole day. And it gets tiring, and I know because I've done it. And you're teaching beginners, and you're going down, and you're like, okay, everyone keep your wedge, keep your snowplow like that, and then you do that yourself because it's easier on the body. Try to maintain the wedge through the day because it's a great way to train your body. And once you get used to that, once you get comfortable with having that kind of position in the legs, 
like that. You can see what it does to the hip. Then you learn to stand with a twist in the lower leg, angle over the outside ski, and grip going through the turn. So view your beginner snowplow lesson as a great opportunity to, <coughs> to train. I'm going to ask this guy to give me his footage from his, um, what do you call that? His GoPro footage later on so we see how good the turns look from his perspective. Okay, that's a different look, isn't it? Okay, so characteristics of this gear. What, what are some first impressions with this gear? He's very, he stands very upright. Okay, he stands upright. Um, okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Looks like he's losing snow contact as well. He loses some snow contact? Okay, so, so when we ski, you've got the, the path that the skis take down the mountain, and you've got the path that the, that the center of mass takes down the mountain. Um, and if you are skiing with performance, um, if you can get the center of mass inside the skis, then the skis can really come up on their side. So if, you're, if you are uh, doing expert skiing, you go like this, you turn your legs, you articulate the ankles like this, like, and then if you want to affect edge angle, you move this way here, and you can affect edge angle by moving the hip inside and getting the skis tipped up on their side, and then you get grip and deflection. And the better, are you, the better you are at doing that, so affecting steering by moving the hip inside and away from the skis in a sense, down to the snow, then the, the more edge angle, the more grip, the more bend the ski has, the tighter the radius becomes, and the better you are as a skier. If you watch great skiing on TV, ski racing for example, and look at the amount of angulation, hip angulation that the skiers get, then it's a pretty clear signal to you uh, what mechanics they're using in order to make the ski grab and deflect their body across the hill. Um, so looking at this skier, do you see a lot of angulation at the hip, or does it look like stuff is happening more lower down in the legs? What do you think? So, so I don't see this guy getting here. I don't see this happening with this person skiing. I don't see that. Like that, I see this. Does that match what you see? I see that with this person skiing versus this. And so, um, here's another, I want to lead you guys to the right answer here, so bear with me. When you watch this skier, Tell me what part of the ski is being turned to start his turn. What part of the ski is being turned? The tails, mm -hmm. the tails huh? Yeah. You see the tails, watch. Okay. See what he does? Okay. Okay, so you can see this. So if that were his skis, the person isn't operating the skis like this, like that. The person is operating the skis like this. Okay, he's moving the back of the ski. Now, and, and then getting grip. You, you will get grip. You'll move, displace the back of the ski out to the side and you will get grip. Not as good grip because, because then you end up in a funny position where you're kind of like that, uh, trying to go through the turn versus this kind of a position here, like that. Um, That's kind of cool. That thing. So, 
if let's say like so you got that all right that's a circle like this and if you were to cut the circle the circle in half then you have a ski turn all right and if a person is skiing well the skis are are going like what around the arc okay like that through the arc all right if the person is a very smooth skier um, and so the skis should be like what would that be who's studied math geometry what is that place there it rhymes with the arc it's an arc and it's so how is that what where's my pen right there come on it's a tangent did you say that tangent you get the prize the skis need to go on a tangent to the arc like this the skis need to go like that through the turn and when a skier does that with the ski and the ski goes around the arc <coughs> this way you can look up and you can go wow that person's smooth because the ski is doing the right thing on the snow like this the skier standing in the center and the turning effort is coming from the center of the ski like this versus versus that versus doing that so you watch this person they're here like this and then they're taking the ski at the, at, at the top and instead of going this way like that the person is taking this and doing that to the ski way up high. So the ski ends up like that, way up high in the turn. Now the correct time for that position with the ski is down here, where it's tangent to the arc. But this person has taken the ski, turned it quickly because of where the ski is being turned. And instead of the ski going smoothly like this through the turn, like that through the turn, making a nice smooth turn this way, the skier is going like this and flipping the ski like that and then ending up with the ski twisted sideways. All right, so let's try and figure out why that's happening with this gear so that we can teach this person how to ski better and using our skills, using our skill-based system. So what's the first thing we should look at? Is ankles in terms of what skill? Are ankles a skill? Okay, what are, what's the kind of the first skill that we look at? So, how, how they stand. Hey, let's look at how, they, how this person stands. Forward pivot point. So what do you see right there? So bent a lot at the ankle and straight and straight where? In the femur, like this. So remember, I had you guys standing up. Here's how we want to turn, like this. Whoop, I'm going to fall over. Who's got a beer for me? Okay, like this. You stand like this, and then you can go like that. So this person is standing like this here, and then the pivoting action is this way. So this person is turning like that and flipping the ski out. So the ski can't possibly go around the arc in a smooth tangent to the, to the turn itself. So this person is flipping the ski that way. So something we can work on is, rhymes with enhance. Enhance the stance. And then so we, he needs to ski like this. This person needs to ski more like that. Now, if this person can turn from the feet, or turn from the legs, rather, so instead of doing that action and messing up the stance, like this, if this person can go like that with their legs, then what can they also do? They can, rhyme, rhyme, rhymes with angulate, very good. They can angulate, thank you, Dan. So if this person can turn from the legs like this here, that action through the start of the turn versus this action, okay? If the person can do that, then they can also lower the body like this, involve the hip in creation of edge, and get more ski performance. Get the ski to grip and get the ski to deflect the, the, the mass to and fro across the hill. Good stuff, huh? What uh, can the, the person, if she has the right stand, what should she feel in her ski boots? What's part of the feet she would feel? Uh, that's a good question. You should feel more the heel. Okay in the ski boot, and probably less of the shin on the front. It's so funny, you know, the, I said this, like 80% of the world skis a little too far forward. And so the world is out there skiing, and they stand forward like this, and, and the, the, the leg is straight here, and they're flexed at the ankle, and it's tough to create edge angle. You know, if you can go like that, you can create edge. If you go like this, it's tough to create edge. So people stand forward, and this is my my own uh, thoughts. They hit a hard patch of snow and what happens to the ski when you stand forward? It slips, hey? So the ski will slip like this. The ski slips and the skier goes back and inside because the platform has slipped and their brain tells them what when they go back? 
they need to get more forward. And so I, I look at the world skiing and I'm going, you know, so many people are out there, they're trying to get more forward, and the so real solution is they need to get further back. And they need to get the body stance looking like this here, where they can do that to their legs and move laterally like this to create edge angle. So, so many people are out there and they're standing like this, like this person. And, and the real fix is to go further back. Uh, thoughts, how can we fix that skier? What are some cool exercises? What's that? Possibly, yeah, possibly. Okay, possibly. Sorry? Inside edge turns. Sorry? Inside edge turns. Inside edge turns, okay. Feel back of the boot. Feel back of the boot. You know what I did? I've been working on this the last couple mornings. And we did some spees. Who loves spees? Hold your hand up if you love spees, my favorite. And so, so someone like that, if I ask this person to do spees, how are they going to do it? It's, it's going to look like this. Okay? Because they're stand forward and they're going to do speech by displacing the back of the ski like that. And the feet will shift side to side. Someone that does speech well looks like this. You can see here, even when I do it as a demonstration in the room, I've got an angle in my leg and I do speech here. I never go like that because as soon as this comes up straight, then I move the back of the ski or the back of the foot in this case. So it's done this way. So I was doing a cool exercise this morning. I had the group doing spees, but leaving the back of the ski on the snow and just lifting the tip of the ski up off the snow. So what would that do? If the skiers are used to moving the back of the ski out to get grip, what would spees with the back of the ski on the snow do? Force us to move what part of the ski? It, move, it forces us to go like that with the tip of the ski. The, the feeling, if someone stands forward, they're used to doing that to the tail. If you can give them the feeling of moving the tip into the turn and leaving the tail where it is, then you are effectively moving their pivot point back. So that was cool. I did something else that was kind of cool this morning. I did some boot skiing. Who here has ever gone boot skiing? Everyone? Nobody? Some of you? Okay. If you go boot skiing, and if you ski like that fellow was doing, what happens? Mm -hmm. You land on your face. Your mm -hmm. toes dig in, you land on your face. So we did some boot skiing this morning. So in order to boot ski successfully, you need to stand like this, here. You can't boot ski and stand with, the, with, with a straight leg, straight femur. Then you're just driving the tip of the boot into the snow and then you fall on your face. Which is great laughs for people that are watching, but not so good when you're trying it. Okay, you see there? Okay. You see there? You see the stance, the forward stance. Give me some thoughts on this skier. Yeah. How, how's, how, did it, how does this skier stand? How's the stance? Forward. A little forward, a little forward, but there's something predominant. Like you see with this skier that she does actually, she is maintaining um, some, some angle in the femur, like that. So the stance is not terrible, but uh, there's something about her movement pattern that causes her problems. What is it? You're nodding your head. She initiates with the upper body. She initiates with the upper body, so you can see the skier going like this. The skier is going around like that. Um, look here. See the way she moves away from the ski. If you initiate with the upper body, where are you taking your weight? Which ski? You're taking it to the inside ski. You know, if you turn away from the direction of travel, you're just putting your, your weight on the inside ski. 
and then the outside ski won't steer and grip effectively. So if she wants, if this skier wants to steer and grip effectively, she needs to turn from the lower body. If I can do If I can go like this, that's her left leg. If I can go like this with my left leg here at the start of the turn, go like that with my left leg without involving the hip. So I go like this with my left leg, then I'm right there. I'm right there to stand on that leg. If I move the hip like that, like she's doing, I'm moving away from the leg, away from the ski, and the ski wants to slip. Now, I know she's moving away from the ski because I can see the angle of the hip line. Do you see that? Like if she's wearing a belt, the belt is tipped like that. If this skier can turn from the lower body, the belt stays level. There's my belt, like that. If you turn from the lower body, the belt can stay level, like this. If you turn from the hips, like that, the belt gets tipped inside, and then you get a bump. You get a bump on the inside of the hip right there. So what's some good tactics to fix this person up? We already talked about it, huh? Anything, like... Anything that makes a skier go like this, like, like any wedge stuff, any javelin stuff, hockey stops, that kind of thing. When you're doing that stuff, so when, if you teach um, wedge turns or power plows or javelin turns, you need to bring it back so that the person isn't confused as to why you're doing that. You need to bring it back to how that is going to impact the ski performance on the snow. So when, I, when you're teaching, you say, you know what, we're doing these wedge turns, and the wedge turns is going to teach you how to turn your leg like this here. That'll give you the ability to angulate over the outside ski, affect edge angle, and effectively steer the ski through to the end of the turn. Then you get grip, and then you get deflection as a result. So make that clear. When you guys are on your teaching, that you get the whole cause and effect thing. So it's not just, here, let's do some wedge turns, everyone stand like this. Let, this is why we're doing the wedge turn, because it's going to encourage separation and leg turning. It's going to allow for angulation that will affect positively the edge angle on the snow, the amount of grip, and then your ability to deflect as a skier. Make that connection. Looking at the, some of the pitfalls that happened on the level four course, there were some people that were teaching great stuff, but it wasn't clear. So how does this exercise impact the ski performance? Always come back to that. Whatever you're doing out there, say it's going to impact the ski performance in this way. It's going to impact your ability to affect the shape of the turn in this way, to improve the steering in this way. Got it? Okay. tipped inside or do you see a skier that's angulated? Tipped inside. So you know he's tipped inside because of what? Okay, so this pole is off the ground. What's some other things that tells you that he's tipped inside? He's straight. The line is straight, isn't it? From the knee right up to the underarm like that, the line is straight. So the skier has done this like that. And then you go straight line this way versus the skier doing this. And then you get an angulated position or C position on the ski. If you were to say, so you say the pole comes off the snow, who said that the pole comes off the snow? If you were to say the pole comes off the snow, and if your fix was I need to ski with the pole on the snow, what do you need to bring the attention back to? How is a skier, if that's your fix, I want you to ski down here and keep the pole touching the snow, what do you have to bring the skier's attention to? Stance and balance. Okay, stance and balance. And so if I, as long as I go like that with my leg and my body, what's going to happen to the pole basket? It's going to come up. So every time I do this, the pole basket's going to come up. So what do I have to do to keep the pole basket on the snow? Pivoting. I need to pivot. And what's it look like? this. Okay. So if I can do that with my leg, I can keep the pole basket on the snow. If I do this, 
then the pole basket is going to come off the snow and I end up tipped inside. So if that's your fix, and I know I've seen that on the level 3 and the 4 course, I need you to drag your poles, <coughs> that's not enough. The way you're going to achieve dragging your poles is by turning your leg like that and then you can get angulated. The angulation is going to result in better balance on the outside ski, an ability to increase the edge angle, better grip, and then better steering and deflection of the mass. A little better angulation on that side, hey? Yeah, yeah. This side, yeah. That side, a little bit, a little quick, but he angulates better on one side than the other. Okay, so why, why does the top of the turn look so fast? In this case, just washing out. Okay. okay, so, okay, so the ski's washing out, so, that would mean what? So the tip and the tail aren't following in the same path. The tip and the tail aren't doing this. So the tail is actually going outside the tip. The tail is moving like that, going outside the tip. And then the top of the turn, instead of being a nice smooth round arc, then the top of the turn kind of gets cut off and shortened. And then you don't get the nice smooth uh, uh, turning effect. I'm going to grab my bucket again. You're going to grab your what? I'm going to grab my bucket again. So like that, remember, like cut that in half, cut the bucket in half, and you want the turn to be like this. And when I say that, so if I were to, if that's half my turn, who's got something there? There's half my turn, like that, half my turn. I'm getting all the props out, huh? There's half, there's my turn right there. So if I were to draw a line in the center part of the turn like this, the lower part of the arc needs to match the upper part of the arc. Hmm. Do you understand? Like if I were to cut that this way then, and fold it, it shouldn't be a mirror image. And so if the ski gets twisted from the front of the ski uh, and the tail gets smeared to the side of the, of the path that the tip is taking, then the top part of the turn isn't smooth and round. You lose that top part of the turn. Now, one of our goals is to do what with our mass? Deflect the mass. So if I get the skis to follow that path through here, by the time I get to the lower part of the turn, I've got some pace, some, I've got some momentum, and then the because the ski has done that, my body is going to go which way? Across the hill, if I do that. If I take the skis, and if I, instead of having the ski go like this, here, like that, if I do this to the ski and twist it there like that, it's not going to have the same energy coming through the lower part of the turn, and the skier won't be able to deflect the mass. Um, yeah, good demonstration there. Can, can, when sometimes we say, you know, what we're looking for is like more like a C-shaped... In the body. Of, in the turn. A C-shape in the turn. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. at the end of the turn, there's a more... So, it's not always the same radius. Mm -hmm. The radius becomes shorter at the end. Yeah, you Would know, you? What, yeah, what were you going to say? No, what, uh, what's your feedback on this? My feedback is this, the, the um, base of support has to pass under the center of mass. I agree, yeah. So, so the turn has to go like this, here, like this, like, like that, like that. You're not finished until the skis get that kind of a thing going on. So that your yeah. path of travel with the mass gets tripped up as a result of the steering of the lower body. So for sure, sometimes it feels like you're doing this to the turn, feels like that, and sometimes you do that, just add a little bit more uh, steering effort through the end okay. of the turn in order to trip the body up and into the new turn and get the skis off to the new side of the, mm. of the body. Oh. I think what you're saying, like... Because if the, if, the edge, if the edge angle always increase from the start to the finish of the turn, okay. can we still have the same radius in the turn? Okay, that's an interesting question. So, you're talking edge angle. So, where is edge angle the steepest? The, the more? Yeah, where is it the greatest? I would say at the end of the turn. Okay, at the end of the turn, if you're doing what kind of turn? Let's say a dynamic turn. Okay, if you're doing an expert turn, you're actually, your edge angle is steepest somewhere near the fall line. 
Okay, and so if my goal, Michelle, this is good stuff. If my goal is to is to make my body go from side to side down the hill, so I'm di displacing the mass like this, then my momentum is carrying me out to the side that way, and I need a steep edge angle to stop my body from traveling in that direction, and then change direction so I can take the body going across that way in expert skiing. Okay, so so. Um, in, in intermediate skiing, the, the edge angle is steepest where? At the, At the bottom part of the turn, and that would be because you want grip because of because the force of what? The, the force of gravity, like in a slow turn, or if you're coming down something really steep, the force of gravity, you're not going that fast, the force of gravity is pulling you that way, so you need to resist the pull of gravity by getting a, a, a steep edge angle through the lower part of the turn or later on. But if you're going expert, then your mass is going this way, here mm -hmm. and here, and you need the steep edge angle kind of around the fall line to stop your body from traveling. If you're doing corridor, think about corridor, you, you get the body to displace off to the side like this, you go like that with the ski, you get the ski steep, because you want to get the body going back to the other side of the corridor. Where do you have the only, I'm trying to reconciliate this because at the end of the turn it's not where you've got the maximum inclination and the maximum angulation at no. the end of the turn. No. Well this is where, ah, you know what, it's, yeah. It that's, depends. That's an, uh, no, it no, depends. No, but yeah, I think you're um, looking when they go, when the racer go in the gates. When they are at the gates, they're at the fall line, yeah. and this is where they get the maximum yeah, edge angle. Yeah, correct. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, then after that, they so start to the release. So from the fall line yeah. to the end of the turn, what's happening to they the start edge to, angle? They start to, yeah, they start to release. Yeah. So if you imagine that, so the ski comes like this here, here like this, it does that and gets steep here into the fall line, and then it starts to come back to the skier through the lower part, and then it gets steep out to the fall line this way. So the skier is putting a steep edge angle because they need to stop the mass from traveling that way and get it to go that way. And then if you're, if you're skiing more intermediate, if you were skiing steeps, uh, like short radius on very steep terrain, you watch some of the extreme guys, they need a lot of edge angle where? What part of the turn? Hmm. More to the end of the turn because the pull of gravity, they're not traveling that fast and the pull of gravity is what's pulling them. So they need to to stop their bodies from going that way down the hill and they need maximum edge angle. So, um, so I guess the maximum edge angle comes where you need to stop the body from traveling to. And if you're skiing expert with lots of deflection, it's on the side. If you're skiing slower, intermediate, it's further down in the arc. Or if you're doing, you know, turns on something really steep, it's further down on the arc. So would you say you're looking for the ski to so. bend? Sort of. Yeah, sort of. You need to go, so that's a good point. So if I'm skiing corridor, um, ideally I make the ski go like this through the corridor and there, there's an ideal place for me to hit on the other side of the corridor with my skis and I better get my skis pointed to that spot that I need the ski to hit on the other side of the corridor. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like if yeah, like, like, it's not, I know, I've heard that, that you think that can send you that way, like a, like a trampoline. Yeah. It's actually, it, it stops your body from traveling in that direction, and then you steer the ski to the point on the other side that you need to get to. So you don't want that bounce. Yeah, it's not really a bounce. I know I've heard that. It's not really a bounce. It's just stopping the momentum from going that way, and then steering the ski accordingly to aim the momentum to go to the right spot on the other side. We're getting yeah. technical here, aren't we? It's good. Yeah. So, it's the expert turn you're talking about here. Yeah, expert is turns. That, is that the same expert turn that we're doing in the level three? Level level three, you're doing advanced. So it's slightly between. Good. That's a good point. So, so in advanced turns, the the you know in expert turns, the edge angle is high in the fall line. In advanced turns, the speed's a little bit lower, and the and the amount of edge angle is steepest a little further down through the arc. But still, look for the kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Should we watch a couple more skiers and then wrap it up? We're five minutes to five. You want a magic chair? What time? Okay, what's wrong here, guys? Uh,
I can just. Can you see? Yeah, now we can see. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's Perfect. happened there, guys? Two things you need to work on. He's rotated and he's forward. Fix his stance, teach him to turn from the lower body. Similar thing, Hank gets a little forward, like that, you can see the hips are over top of the boots, the hips have to stay behind the boots, and you can see that the skier, you know, is connected again, that the skier rotates the body. So forward, you see where the foot is, in behind the hip, and the skier is, instead of, you know, facing the outside of the turn, the skier gets rotated and gets on the inside ski. If the skier can turn from the lower body and stand correctly, then what do you see that is stronger in the skier? Rhymes with grip or smearing. <laughs> so they get more grip and better steering action if they if you can change those things with the skier. See the way the ski slips away, huh? Stance. It's a forward stance. You see how straight the femur is. Foot gets caught behind. Forward stance. Mm -hmm. As a result of the forward stance, what part of the ski gets moved? The tail gets moved a lot, doesn't it? Look, so the pivot point is forward because of that stance and the tail gets moved. When the tail gets moved like that, can you edge effectively? The negative. You can't grip and edge effectively. See that? Okay, see how many skiers do that, eh? Look, see how forward this skier is. So many people were programmed to go f to get forward on the skis. And you can't grip the you can't grip the snow if you're forward on the ski like that. Well, we're taught that, and they in the British system they would tell us to pivot from the front of the binding as well. Yeah, which is not right. Yeah. You see that? Okay. Same thing. Look at how straight the leg is. You can ski around like that. You can ski all day because you're not getting tired, but the ski's never gripping. Okay. See, it's like an epidemic, isn't it? It's an epidemic of forward. We had this conversation earlier because there's this idea that good skiing should always be really effortless, but that's not entirely true, is it? Because what is good skiing? That's a very good question. What is good skiing? Performance skiing. Okay. Doesn't like people say you know it doesn't have to be physically strenuous, but I think you actually really have to try. It's physically strenuous. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a myth, right? Yeah. It is a myth because if you ski if you ski well, here's a here's something. If you ski well, it looks effortless. It looks flowing and looks effortless. To make it look effortless, you need to be really strong because it's very demanding on the legs. You know what I'm going to do next for next week? I'm going to I'm going to take my camera. I'm going to film a couple guys off of YouTube that ski it effortlessly and powerfully, and you'll see how they stand compared to what what these what these people are doing. Good though, all these people level two instructors, so you're going to see lots of this on the level three course or exams. Having standing well and turning from the lower body, 
if you can do those two things, you're a great skier. So it's part of the development, like it takes time to become a great skier. So standing well, turning from the lower body, anyone that isn't already really good, like a level four instructor, are going to have challenges in that area, and that's what you're going to see. So the development takes time to stand correctly, and, um, and it's not the training, these people have heard it before, it's just that their, their muscles haven't been trained yet, they haven't put the mileage in, and they haven't worked on the various exercises, whether it be power plows or spees or whatever, uh, to develop their skills to that level. So it's, it'd be great if I could just say to these people, what do you think I was, I was teaching them that day. Yeah. I'm telling them how to stand, but it takes a long time. See the way the ski gets moved to the side of the body. Hmm. This is the mm. level four course at Silver Star. What time is it now? We'll just play this for a second here. You see the way this skier moves the back of the ski and gets forward. You see that? Moves the back of the ski and gets forward. That's a better side. That side's not so good. That's a better side. That side's not so good. Nice steep run here, huh? Okay, what part of the ski is moving? Okay, what what joint in that in the or what I can say bone? What bone is very straight there? That's a straight bone you got there, son. What bone is very straight? The femur is very straight, and the back of the ski gets moved. Okay, same thing. These are people that have passed the level three, and they're working towards level four. Okay. And when you stand like that, you can't grip an edge and deflect mass. This is better, huh? This person just passed his level four skiing. See the angle of the leg. See the angle of the leg. See the angle of the leg, huh? Just, he's a better skier because he's got a better stance, among other things. Just past the ski. Okay? What part of the ski moves? Hmm. The tail, look at the stance. The, the upper leg is straight, that's a better side. Okay? See how straight that leg is. Same thing, huh? See that? Foot's in behind the body. See the foot in behind the body. Same thing. A lot of flexion in the ankle and straight in the, in the upper leg. Same thing. Lots of flexion in the ankle. And what part of the ski slips? <laughs> the tail slips, huh? Look. Tail slips. Tail slips. Every turn, tail slips. And when the tail slips, you lose the energy in the ski and you don't get to deflect the mass. Last year, and then we're going to call it a day, you guys. Okay, what part of the ski is moving? Okay, same thing, huh? <laughs> Do you see it? Trying to get them to separate here. Trying to get them to separate so they don't follow the skis as much. Can you guys see that if I'm... Okay, good. You see an angle of the leg there. The separation. If I stand like this here, like that, then I can balance pretty well. If I do this with my hip, what happens to my stance? It goes forward. And the reason is because the, the path that the feet take is, takes a further path in the body 
If I spin my body at the same rate as I spin the feet, then I end up forward. Like when you drive a car, you go around the corner, the outside wheel spins a lot more than the inside wheel does. If both wheels spin at the same rate, you're going to wear out your tires. So, so if you go like that, you'll end up forward. If you go like this, you'll end up in a better spot. So that's what we're seeing. The skier is doing better with this exercise. It's a really good one, eh, Ken? It's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. That's the Norwegian is is that, Yeah, that is a Norwegian pole plan. Very yeah. straight in the leg. And I can see how straight the leg is with that guy. Straight in the leg. Yeah, you're right. He's got to stay down. His habit is to pop up and move the back of the ski. He's used to getting edged by just placing his feet. Yeah. It's better. This is the guy that just passed his course. Huh? Yeah. You see why. Uh, There's a deflection. Yeah. Uh, Simon from, from uh, Silverstar. No. Yeah. 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 Say with that skier, he has trouble turning the legs. Stance that great skiers have. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.